Hi there, my name is Jeff Jones, and I'm the pastor of the Heritage Baptist Church. Uh, welcome to our YouTube channel, and um, we're going to be looking in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 today. So uh, grab your Bible, push pause if you need to, and um, let's, uh, let's study the Word of God together. been doing a series on list in the Bible. I thought I was going to end that last week. And I wanted to tag on one more message that has to do with this. So if you would go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and we're going to begin in verse number 23. And this is a list that belongs to Paul. It's a very personal list. And um, you'll see in just a moment. <clears throat> it says in verse 23, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool, I am more in labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeyings often in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often in hunger and thirst, in fastings often in cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches." That is a very personal list <clears throat> that belongs to Paul. And I just want to kind of rehash just very quickly the list that we've already looked at. The first one was in Genesis, God's first list. And it's a list of the days and the creation uh, days, a list of uh, what happened, what he did. Um, he puts those in order. The seventh day, it says that he rested from his labor. So this is in Genesis 1, it's God's creation list. And it says, in the evening and the morning were the first day, the evening and the morning were the second day, on through uh, that. So they so say, why, why, would, why would anyone give a list or why would God use a list? First of all, uh, we saw early in this series that it is informative. It, it, is, uh, it is the deliverance of truth. It is the telling of what happened. And so it is a revealing what has been maybe a mystery and creation was a mystery to all of us because none of us was there but God. And so it is a revealing of what he did and he lists that in a way that makes sense. It is ordered in a way that we're able to receive it. It's not just a download, a rush of information. It's uh, uh, God moves in a logical order. So it is the delivery uh, of information. The second thing is to prioritize. And there are other lists that that maybe was played more of a factor. Um, there's a list where a uh, man asks uh, the greatest commandments and God deals with the first one. The first great commandment is to, to love God. And the second one is to, to love your neighbor as yourself. And so uh, God prioritizes uh, this list. The first thing is to deal with God. Uh, we see that in the Ten Commandments. That was the second list that we looked at. God has many more lists than we, what we dealt with, but in Exodus chapter 20, you have God's list of ten, uh, God's great do's and don'ts. The first uh, four have to do with uh, really our relationship with God, this vertical uh, thing. And then the next uh, um, starting at five all the way through 10 deals with the horizontal, how we deal with people. And in that, that part of uh, the list, the, the first thing is uh, that we're not to have any other gods. Israel specifically is who he's speaking to there. Um, and so that is to prioritize the first thing on the list. We ought to definitely do that. Ought to do the whole list, but definitely do the first thing. Um, then the third why I have a list is to keep from being overwhelmed. Uh, God gives in a way that uh, I'm going to take the list in order. I'm going to deal with it uh, as it comes. I used to work in retail for a while, 
and uh, I was in a business that uh, was growing uh, wildly. Uh, it was uh, the business at times would just have people literally lined out the out the door, and I would tell people that worked for us that I said do. Do not go past the person in front of you. Deal with that person. Don't worry about the, the line. Just take care of that person. Uh, make sure they get what they need. Um, take care of their needs. And so there is this thing of not getting overwhelmed, just dealing with a list, um, bite at a time. Um, kind of the big joke is how, you eat, how do you eat an elephant? Uh, one bite at a time. And so God's giving us things in a way that we can deal with it with our minds uh, the best way. And then the fourth thing, and there are probably other reasons to give a list, but uh, to give a plan of action, uh, how, to, how to break things down and how to go forward with it. What, what are you going to do with this thing? Um, the, the third list that we looked at was in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and it's, uh, in a sense, God's terrible list, uh, uh, in a sense that it lists um, many uh, sins that we'd would say that these are very awful things uh, that would make us uncomfortable to, to think about. And so that terrible list that God gives, at the end of that list, he's, Paul says, such were some of you. You used to be that, but now you're something different. And so what it was terrible in a sense is wonderful because God says you used to be these terrible things at your core. That's what you were. But when I moved in, I changed you. I changed your life. And so that list was very revealing. Uh, it, was, uh, it was also a plan of action in a sense that uh, if we are those things, we need to turn to the Lord so we'd be different and changed. Uh, the fourth list we looked at was uh, God's think list in Philippians chapter 4. And uh, verse 8 is where the verse where it says, think on these things. Let me just read it for you real quick. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And so there is a list there. And we're to sp I think if we're going to look at it in why God would give a list like this, information, a priority. Think first on true. You can find truth in the Bible. And then it's to keep us from being overwhelmed. We take these a piece at a time. And then a plan of action. I'm going to think on these things. And it says in verse 9, it says, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. So you're thinking so that you do. You think right, you'll do right. And so uh, he says, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. And so all these things, why do you give a list? Man gives lists. There's a reason for that. God gives lists. There's a reason. All through the Bible, there, there are lists. So this is God's think list. You got to write that down. The things that God wants you to think about. Things that are true. Things that are honest. Things that are just, pure, lovely, of a good report. If it's virtuous and if it's praiseworthy. You ought to think about those things that you might do what God wants you to do. Then the last thing on the list was in Revelation chapter 21, the last book of the Bible. It says in verse 27, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth. It's talking about that great city. Neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. And we talked a little bit about that, that list there, uh, God's list, the Lamb's list, the list that he owns. It is effectual. It talks about in chapter 20 about how God uses that list to divide mankind. Um, those that are lost, their names are not found in this list. They're cast into the lake of fire. So it's effectual in the sense that it will divide mankind. Uh, it is enormous. Uh, this is a book uh, that... Uh, it's a list that is so big, it is a book. And so uh, it has many, many names, um, many people on that list. Uh, we would probably think millions and millions of people on this list that God has, this book, it's enormous. Not only that, it's eternal. It says it's the Lamb's book of life. You know, 
This book is not like any other book, that book of life, in the sense that other books will burn up when this world is destroyed. Uh, I've lost books. I've damaged books, books that I've owned, Bibles that I've owned have fallen apart and uh, been damaged. But this book will last as long as God lasts. It's e an eternal book. And then the last thought of that, about that book, about that list is this, is that it is enjoyable. I kind of played out in my mind and just purely speculation about what heaven would be like. And um, we're there in heaven and it's one long day, uh, no night there. And maybe we've asked before to see our name on that list. My name is written there. Uh, if you know Christ as your savior, your name is written there. I think we'll never get tired of seeing our name on that list. Hey, I, whoever keeps the list, maybe it's an angel in my mind that keeps it. Maybe it's God himself that keeps it. I know it talks about the books being opened, and but I think there's something special about this book. Hey, can I, can I see my name on that list again, my name that has to do with salvation. Maybe in that list there's details. Uh, maybe there's things that uh, are noted about your name being there, the date that you were saved, the circumstances sur surrounding it, maybe who was involved, who was there, who saw it, who uh, was instrumental in it happening in your life. So I think we'll enjoy seeing that list again and again throughout eternity. But just in the moment or few that I have left, I wanna encourage you about this. Uh, you need your own list. We've studied these. Uh, these have been, all five of these uh, messages have had to do with God's list. But I think you ought to have a list. Paul has a list there in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And from 23 to 28, he talks about all the difficulties that he's been in, uh, the awful things, uh, robberies, peril at sea, shipwrecks, beatings, um, peril uh, from uh, just tremendous difficulties uh, in his life. And um, he mentions not just the things that are coming from outside, but also the care of the churches is a heavy load. And I don't think he's written that down just to belly ache and whine about it, but I think he's listing those things that God has helped him to overcome. Those are things that are points in his life that he'd say, God helped me there. God took me through that. God helped me to go in these journeys, uh, the, the hunger, um, the difficulties, the, the heat, the cold, uh, the privation, uh, the shipwrecks, the beatings, uh, all these things. I'm recording those so that I will remember that God is a faithful God. Um, then he has a list in Philippians chapter three uh, that would be Paul's list. Philippians chapter three, verse four. It says, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man think that he have whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. He says, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. And so he's got a little list there about his brag points, but he says those don't mean anything to me anymore. Um, uh, Christ is the, the go. Christ is my prize. And so uh, you need to find your own list. You, <laughs> get out a pen and paper and begin to list some things. Um, our memories are so short, aren't they? Uh, you, you could use a list to motivate yourself and others. Maybe you would include a list in a book that you write. Maybe you're going to use a list uh, in Sunday school. Maybe the next time you're at church, you get an opportunity to give a testimony. Uh, you're going to use a list and you're a catalog uh, blessings that would prompt you to praise him. A place where you've overcome. You're going to use it to inform people, inform yourself, to reveal things, to prioritize tasks that you need to complete. You're going to give yourself a plan of action so that you're not overwhelmed uh, with these things. And so I was thinking about these things just in a very practical sense. Um, now let's think about this. What list could we have? 
I think, first of all, probably the list that most of us would come up with is this thought, a prayer list, a prayer list. And so those are so helpful, aren't they? Um, so many people ask, they say, please pray for me. And I tell them sometimes, look, if I don't get it on my list, I'll forget. I'm, I'll not remember like I ought to. And so uh, let's get it on a prayer list. And you know, the thing about a prayer list, it's not just something to prompt you to pray. I'm, I, I try to be careful when, I'm, when I put something on my list, that I put it on the list, and then when it gets answered, I put a date and how God answered that. And so it becomes not just a thing to do prayer, but also it gets me to a place where when I see it, I can see how God worked. I can trust him in a greater way. And uh, I know that I can praise him uh, to the fullest when I praise him according to how he answered that prayer. And I, I tell you, although I know God answers prayer, when I see those things recorded, again and again and again it just man it just balloons my faith in a way that's incredible so i think you need to have a prayer list and then you ought to have a praise list a praise list and so these kind of go hand in hand i would say a praise list is something where god's helped god's overcome maybe just maybe the a list is just about him points of, that you say Okay, what well, we will praise God about today. Praise him for the fact that he loves me. Praise him for the fact that he is holy, that he is pure in every way. Uh, I'm going to praise him because he's everlasting. And so you would maybe make a list of all these things to brag about the Lord, uh, a list of how God has met needs over the course of time. Probably one of my favorite uh, uh, things I think back about over um, a New Year's period was when our boys were young. They were still in the house. And uh, one of us, I, I don't know if it was me, but somebody mentioned that we ought to write down what God did in the, the year, the whole year. And I thought, well, we'll be back in five or 10 minutes, you know, and uh, we'll have a handful of things. I had four pages of things that God, when I began to think about it, it's just like the gate opened up. And the, the boys and my wife, same thing, just thing after thing. And things that I'd forgotten, they, they remembered. And things that they forgot, just, you know, maybe my wife remembered. And so uh, it became a place where we could praise God. Oh, I'll tell you, the Lord loves to hear praise of him. Uh, then maybe a Bible reading list that you'd be faithful to it. Um, that would be something that you'd be at all the time. Uh, that you would not neglect anything. Uh, there's certain books of the Bible that I especially like, and there's others that it's a toil, to be honest, uh, to go through. It's it's uh, maybe uh, uh, I don't understand it as well. Maybe it's uh, all those Old Testament names that are difficult, and so a Bible reading list keeps me honest. Um, there may be a list of special days. I have that in one of my Bibles. Uh, my salvation date, the day that I was baptized, and some of the details surrounding those things, uh, the day that I surrendered to go plant churches, uh, the last day that I was at a, at a pastorate, and the things that happened around that. There's other days I probably need to record um, in my life, spiritual, spiritual high points, I think, and list those days and remind yourself about it, uh, a day that maybe you surrendered to God to do whatever, and so a list of those special days. And then maybe a spiritual to-do list. A spiritual to-do list. What are you working on? What, what ought to increase? What ought to be different in your life? What should you quit? What should you add? How are you going to do that? Put your list together. Work on it. Uh, make, it uh, make it strong. Give it a time limit. Uh, that Within this certain time period, I'm going to do this. Um, maybe you're using a list to, to gauge your giving. Uh, I encourage you to do that, to see that from maybe not just year to year, but ask for it sooner. Every quarter, maybe every six months, say, I'd like to see my giving record. I, I'd like to see how I'm doing. As for, Am I been steady? Um, I can see where I slacked off here. And so uh, use those lists, a, a special days list, a giving list, a to-do list. There's some lists that you shouldn't have, though. Uh, don't have a list of all the all the those that have wronged you. 
That may be a long list, maybe a short list. I don't know. Um, but if you go through life, taking names of all the people that have uh, treated you poorly or didn't say hello or were, was somehow unkind to you, it's, it's probably going to be a long list, to be honest. And you're going to think about all those people that have been unkind to you and uh, wronged you and were uh, at fault with you. And uh, don't do that. Just put it in the back. Put it in the rear view mirror. Try to stay on top. Keep your heart clean. Keep your heart pure. Don't dwell on the negative. Dwell on the positive. De dwell on God. Dwell on the right things. Philippians 4, 8. Think on these things, true things, lovely things, pure things, good report things, virtuous things, praiseworthy things. Put that other junk behind you. And uh, so don't start, don't even start a list like that. Some people keep that list in their mind. It's rolling over it again and again. No wonder they're sour. No wonder they're bitter. No wonder they're mean. Then don't, don't have a list of your spouse's faults. Hey, we got married almost 36 years ago. Our anniversary's coming up. And um, both of us are humans. Man, do we have faults? I know I do. And um, it'd be a bad thing for her to record all of mine and uh, play them back for me. See, that's what you want to do when you do that. When you record somebody's faults, uh, you, you want to talk about it. Hey, you know how, how many times you did this? Do you know why, why uh, just the other day, I was counting, you did this 12 times, all within an hour. And uh, so don't do that. Don't do that. Don't pick people apart. Maybe maybe you do this, write down all the good things about your spouse, all the good things about your kids, all the good things about your parents, all the good things about your preacher, all the good things about your, your parishioners preacher, uh, all the good things about your Sunday school class or your Sunday school teacher. Write down some good things. I'll tell you, it'll change you, change you. Get your own list. Start your own list today and uh, use it. God will bless it. Amen. And I uh, hope you're doing well. Uh, praying for you. Pray for a couple of men in our church. A couple of them are in the hospital and uh, not doing so hot. And I know they need the Lord to help them. Some of you know my buddy, uh, Dave Knopfinger, and had surgery yesterday. Doing pretty good. And... Um, He's uh, uh, hopefully going to be home and um, going to be on a mend for a while. So uh, lift up my friend uh, to the Lord and ask God to help him in a great way. God bless you. We'll see you next time.